I woke up this morning winning. Do you have any idea what it's like to wake up as the dizzle? I've got 1.6 billion people flagging everything I post. I've got the YouTube trust and safety team, a bunch of spoiled narcissists crouching in the safe spaces of their ivory towers, calling everything I say hate speech. Every day when I log on to YouTube, I wonder if this is the day they'll finally ban me because they do that sort of thing. And yet, I just keep winning. I don't know if I'll be winning tomorrow, but today I'm winning. A few weeks ago, I posted a video titled Secrets of the Quran featuring Sheikh Dr. Yasser Qadi. It was just a bunch of clips of Yasser Qadi saying that Muslims aren't ready to hear the truth about their book. And every time Yasser Qadi said that the preservation of the Quran shouldn't be discussed in public, I had Jack Nicholson shout, You can't handle the truth! Because that's basically what Yasser Qadi was saying. In response, Yasser Qadi filed a false copyright complaint to YouTube. Maybe he thought, I didn't know that I'm allowed to use those clips because of the fair use doctrine. Maybe he thought I just wouldn't be willing to go to court over this. Whatever the reason, Yasser Qadi filed a false copyright complaint claiming that I was illegally using his footage. Fun fact, everyone, you're allowed to use clips of another person's video in order to criticize it. Sorry, Yasser Qadi, but I ain't your dimmy. Never have been, never will be. Now, Yasser Qadi is a scholar. He knows about fair use. Scholars rely on fair use whenever they quote someone else's work. But he filed a false copyright complaint anyway. Why? Well, this is a guy who will go to one group and say... So the Caliph Uthman standardized the copies of the Quran, and therefore, from his time up until our time, there has never been two copies of the Quran that are different even in one letter or one word, and this is because of the farsightedness of the Caliph Uthman. And then go to another group and say... And when we say the various different ways to recite the Quran, we are not talking about different voices or different styles. We're talking about slight differences in pronunciations, slight differences in letters, especially those who have been exposed to uh, some of our brothers who live in Algeria or Morocco or other North African countries, they recite the Qur'an in a slightly different way. Not just a voice or not just a, 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 a speaking style, but also changes in letters and, and, and words and uh, harakat. Did you catch that? Every copy of the Qur'an since the time of Uthman is completely identical in every way, right down to the letter. Same story we've been hearing for years. From his time up until our time, there has never been two copies of the Qur'an that are different even in one letter or one word. And yet, oddly enough, there are different Qur'ans even today, with different words and different letters. They recite the Qur'an in a slightly different way. Not just a voice or not just a, 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 a speaking style, but also changes in letters and, and, and words and uh, harakat. This is what we call lying. To my Muslim friends who are watching, why don't you care at all that your scholars lie to your faces? Why doesn't this bother you? The more they lie to you, the more you love them. What kind of religion turns its scholars into compulsive liars? Well, at some point, some of these Muslim scholars who built their careers upon pillars of lies because they know that their followers will never, ever call them out for their lies, suddenly realized that there are people like me, and Jay Smith, and Hatun Tash, and Islam Critique, and the Apostate Prophet, and Abdullah Samir, and a bunch of others who will call them out for their lies. They now know that they can't keep going to one group of Muslims saying one thing, and then going to another group of Muslims and saying something completely different because we'll put the clips together and expose them as liars. So, Sheikh Yasser Qadi decided that he just won't talk about the preservation of the Quran in public anymore because he knows that anything he says will contradict other things that he said and will be used to expose his lies. But even his refusal to discuss the preservation of the Quran was used against him, and in a panic, he filed a false copyright complaint. I submitted a counter notification and said that I'm willing to go to court over this, and this morning, YouTube said, Dear Act 17 Apologetics, 
In accordance with the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, we've completed processing your counter notification. The following videos have been restored, unless you have deleted them. And that's the video that Yasser Qadi had taken down. So it's back up now. Winning. Yasser Qadi lost. Unfortunately for him, this isn't over. When people pull dirty stunts like this, I suddenly come up with some special project. After Nabil died, I got hundreds of messages from Muslims saying, seeking Jesus, finding cancer. That gave me a burst of creative energy, and we put together the epic series, Islamicize Me. For my debate with Muhammad Hijab, Muslims made me agree to a bunch of rules, which they then violated over and over and over again during the debate. No problem. It gave me a burst of creative energy. And that's when Muhammad's boom, boom room was born. They get dirty. I take it out on their profit. Then they get mad at me for going after their profit. So they get dirty again, which makes me go after their profit even more, which makes them even angrier and so on. We've got an awesome feedback loop here, my friends. What sort of savage mockery awaits Yasser Qadi's fake prophet? I think we might need to call Chris Hansen for an episode of To Catch a Prophet.